Hi, everybody. Happy Wednesday. How's it going? How's it going, everyone? Awesome. 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 All right, everybody. Welcome. Welcome. Welcome back. I am seeing some of you here for the first time today. Some of you here for the second time. Felice is in sunny Florida. Felice, you were, didn't you present last time and it looked like you were at this like fancy sunny resort or something. It was snowing over here in Colorado. I was, was so jealous of that. Um, but welcome everybody to our reporting metrics and KPIs skills challenge today. Of course, we've got the amazing Brian here. Brian, let's hear if you have a, um, a funny story about KPIs and metrics in your career, if you could share that with us along with, with your introduction today. All right. Uh, so my name is Brian Owens. Um, I live in Atlanta, Georgia. I'm coming to you all live from New York City because I'm in town visiting uh, the team at the office because I work for NBC Universal. I'm a project manager there supporting our local, national, and now our global ad sales team. I'm a golden hoodie winner. I am 16 times certified and reporting is really where um, I kind of got my confidence and really made a name for myself in my first Salesforce role. So excited to be here with you all today. Um, the funny story regarding KPIs, um, this one actually happened kind of recently. I was working with one of our marketing teams um, and they were trying to track uh, activities. So as you all know from working with any company, namings are different. So I'm sitting in a meeting with them and they are talking about events and tracking meetings. So I go do all of this research. I'm coming back and providing them all these KPIs based upon what I think they're talking about. Only to find out when I come back with my KPIs talking about improving the, the amount of uh, meetings that we can have, that they are actually referring to campaigns. So all of this work that I had done it was just kind of throwaway work because that is not what they were trying to track. They were trying to track actual uh, meeting attendance and not meeting occurred. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, I mean, you illustrated thorough work, missed the <laughs> definition of the word, but at least, you know, they, they know that, you know, some stuff about <laughs> KPIs. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so we, we all make mistakes. We all misinterpret and, and, and we go from there. Awesome. 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 All right, everybody. Well, here's what we're going to do today. Introducing, of course, the goals, the principles, what you're going to be doing in this scenario, in this skills challenge. We're going to do a discussion on the topic, what KPIs are, what they are not. How do we go about discovering what they are? Um, I will have always lots of questions regarding this topic, but your questions are so much more interesting and important than mine most of the time. So as things come up, uh, feel free to ask those questions and help all of us learn together. And then, of course, we've got live feedback. This is the time where you get to come up on stage and get feedback on something that you have created. Um, I don't know if Brian mentioned this before, that Golden Hoodie, he's made a name for himself in UX design reporting dashboards, KPIs, and whatnot. So definitely an amazing opportunity to share your work and have a coach um, look at your work and, and give feedback. And then there is discussion and Q&A. This is woven in, not necessarily at the end, but more discussion. And as a reminder of what we do here, we learn from each other. It is a safe space to try, not get it perfect, but try and of course have fun. How do I interact in the session? Well, everyone, as you can see, there is a little emoji button here at the bottom of your screen. Drop some emojis so I know that you've found it. Maybe a little bit of confetti. Drop some emojis for us. Amazing. That is one way uh, that you can interact in the session. Of course, there's the best part, raising your hand, getting live feedback. 
And then you can also use the chat. You can ask questions live. The chat is a great place to talk to other learners that are here, and another great way to stay engaged in the session. And of course, you can ask a question live if you've got something that, you know, a pressing question or something you would like to explore regarding the topic of reporting metrics and KPIs, you can come on stage and we can have a live discussion about it. You can also use the Q&A box, have your question to be brought on stage. And that is always really good for getting some great discussion going. So let's dive into the scenario and the task. I'm going to send you all the interview notes here. So I've just posted everyone in the chat, the interview notes uh, regarding today's scenario about Chase Bank. They are a renowned provider of banking and credit card services and are facing challenges with their customer conversion process due to siloed data systems. Employees are struggling with a fragmented view of customers and appointment scheduling, and that complicates customer engagement. Your team had a chance to interview Orion Caldwell, and you've been provided with interview notes to assist you in creating this presentation. And you can find those interviews notes in the chat. What you're going to be doing here today is making a presentation for Orion with the goal of pinpointing which data points need to be visualized in the report and dashboard. You're not going to build the report and dashboard, but you just need to decide what you're going to put in the dashboard. So think about key data points that your stakeholder might need for visibility, determine the best metrics and KPIs to report on, and then create a presentation of your findings. You'll wanna think through potential challenges or barriers that might arise when building the report. Um, again, you're not gonna build the report in the session, but you will build the presentation which will illustrate which metrics and KPIs you're thinking will be helpful to meet the stakeholders needs. Of course, today you're going to present your deliverable to our coach to get feedback, improve upon what you bring, and then you can take that into future skills challenges as well, um, that knowledge and ultimately your portfolio, professional portfolio in your career journey. So with that, everybody, we are going to get a cue going. Now's the time if you would like to present your work. If you have any live questions, you can raise your hand and uh, I will bring you up on stage in due time. But first, let's start with a discussion on the topic. Brian, can you tell us a little bit about KPIs, why they're important? And we'll start there and see where it goes. What are KPIs and why are they important? All right, that's uh, as great a place to start as any. So. KPIs, the acronym stands for Key Performance Indicators. Um, essentially what they are in a nutshell is they are, I like to look at it as kind of like your project goal. It's a, it's a tangible, quantifiable project goal. Um, my general rule of thumb when I'm looking to develop KPIs is driven around two things. Um, I come from a sales background, so it's always about what can we do to improve revenue um, or grow revenue? And what can we do to make salespeople more efficient? So that could be um, we're going to increase by implementing Salesforce or by implementing a new enhancement to a Salesforce system, we are going to grow revenue by 10% over the next calendar year or by um, implementing a new app exchange solution we are going to decrease the amount of time that it takes for a salesperson to input an opportunity, or we're going to reduce the sales cycle by X amount of days. Okay, just taking notes here. And so it sounds like the, um, the KPIs, it's not just a, you know, I'm looking at the interview notes, number of deals closed. Right. That might be a key metric, but do we need to specify like number of deals closed? We want to increase this by 10 percent. Is that what is a KPI or is it just something we're measuring? Um, it's more so kind of what you say, like you want to increase it by a certain amount. The reason that it's important to do that is KPIs give you a way, like I said, to establish a project goal um, and it's a way to to kind of gauge your success. Um, 
and quick, you know, when you have your your lessons, they say you'll you you will know that you're finished when you do X, Y, and Z. Mm-hmm. Essentially, that's what a KPI does. That's when you know your project is finished because you're able to accomplish X, Y, and Z. So that's why it's not good to have them to be kind of vague to just say to close more sales deals um, or close more sales opportunities. How can you as a consultant say the reason that your organization closed more sales deals is because we implemented Salesforce. And then if you yeah. don't have the customer give you a number, if they close one more sales deal, technically they close more deals. But, you know, obviously corporations want to see more, you know, they want to see a higher level of growth than one to two additional opportunities. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Right. Obviously, <laughs> one <Right>. to two <laughs> opportunities, might, especially, you know, a, a, a big company corporation as Chase Bank, one to two is probably not going no. to cut it. <laughs> yeah. So that's really good information to know, right, is we've been given these interview notes. And then also previous to the skills challenge, there was a stakeholder interview, actually a live recording. So if I'm looking at this for the first time and seeing the uh, the key performance metrics, I might need to dive in a little bit more and discover or set that definition of done, you know, not just customer conversions to new products, but what is that actually going to look like? So, you know, with that in mind, when we are going through the stakeholder interview and, and things like that, if we don't have that information up front, then how do we how do we go about it? Should we just like make our best guess and then go back to it? Or can we find that, you know, information online? Yep. Um, that is a great question. Um, and <laughs> kind of in the Salesforce space in general, you Google a lot. Um, so, yes, if if you are a new consultant and you are not there, you know, to do the interview live, um, what you want to do is you kind of come back with I guess, industry standards. Um, And if you work for a larger consulting company like a PwC, Deloitte, you will generally have somebody on the team, maybe your team lead who has done different projects with other banks. So maybe it's not Chase, but they did an implementation with Wells Fargo. So they can kind of say, hey, other customers we have worked with, you know, after implementing Salesforce and this solution that we're talking to you about, um, they were able to increase um, the number of opportunities by 25%. I just kind of threw that number out there. But generally, mm-hmm. you can Google those numbers. And on Salesforce's website, they actually have a whole list of customers. Um, they kind of just call it success stories. I'll find the link and drop it into uh, the Slack channel for this. But they have a whole thing about success stories where it kind of gives these these detailed accounts of kind of the implementations of Salesforce. That's super cool. Okay. Well, life hack there, everybody, you can Google industry standards. You can look up, you know, similar customers that have worked with Salesforce to, to take a best guess, impress your stakeholder by their ability to uh, read your mind slash, you know, make, make, make a close estimate. Jean asks a really good question here in the chat. Can KPIs use to answer the question, how do you define success? Absolutely. Essentially, that's what it is. Um, That is what you're trying to get them to tell you. Um, It's also, I guess, piggybacking off of Jean's question, this is also how you hold the customer accountable. um, Because as I said in other sessions, adoption is a real problem when it comes to you know, most software systems and Salesforce is not, I guess, removed from that adoption issue. Um, so oftentimes, you know, when you do an implementation, customers may say, oh, well, you told me I could improve my sales volume by 25 percent and it's not happening. So the KPI is kind of what you hold them accountable to. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Does that help with, um, you know, they call it scope creep or, you know, when they... <laughs> they start to expand on the requirements and ask you for things that wasn't in the original agreement? Um, Yes and no. So it helps you avoid scope creep because, you know, as you're going through this and you're establishing the KPIs, you would set up your 
MVP, which is your minimum viable product. And that's what you would deliver to the customer. Now, if they come back and say, you know, reading through the notes here, um, let's say that they want it, a email automation to, to come in. It was like, oh, well, we want this and we want that. Well, that wasn't in our project charter. That wasn't in the scope for this project. Um, so that is the way that you kind of establish that after a project has been established. The KPI helps to make sure when they just give you a blanket statement like, hey, this isn't working, you have information and numbers to go back and say, hey, well, we, we told you that Salesforce would do this. It did this. So we accomplished what we told you what we would do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I can imagine that would make stakeholder conversations quite a bit easier if, if you've got that established ahead of time. Um, all right, everyone, what we're going to go into is kind of a breakdown of the process of how we do this. I am curious if we can get a poll of emojis here. How many of you took a look at this scenario and task before the session? If you took a look at it before, go ahead and give me a heart. And if you're seeing this for the first time and beginning your work now, give me some confetti. A heart if you looked at it before and confetti if you are looking at it for the first time. Confetti, okay, of people looking for it for the first time. Okay, and of everyone in here, uh, give me some confetti if you are here in a skills challenge for the first time. If you're here in a skills challenge for the first time, give me some confetti. And if you are returning, again, give me a heart. Confetti. A couple hearts. Okay, awesome. So much confetti. Great. Well, it's excited to have all of you here for the first time. So I'll do a little refresh of, again, how these sessions go. What we love to do is have this discussion and give you all some materials ahead of time so that you can work on this deliverable and then create a presentation and have Brian give you feedback. So, you know, I, I um, had shared the interview notes in the chat. We're going to walk through the process of how to basically create this presentation. You can be working on it on the side. And then, of course, we learn together based on your participation. I can ask questions all day, <laughs> but sometimes that can get a little bit boring. Most of the time, the best sessions are the ones where someone is brave and raises their hand and comes up to the stage. This is a safe space to try everybody. So um, even if you're not totally sure if it's like the best work or whatever, this is really the greatest place for you to give it a go and start practicing those skills ultimately for when you all land jobs and are working with stakeholders and, and things like that. So at any point in time, there's a little raise hand button at the bottom right hand, uh, bottom right hand corner of your screen. You can raise your hand and that lets me know that you would like to present your work or ask a question. So with that, let's go into how do we actually do this? How do we create a present a presentation for a stakeholder based on KPIs? I have my interview notes and the first step here is it says to identify key data points that your stakeholder needs for visibility, which is really great because your colleague took some excellent interview notes on KPIs, right? Primary sales KPIs and key metrics for, for evaluations. Let's kind of talk through one of these though and, and tie it back to what you were saying before, Brian. Customer conversion to new products this is not quite that definition of done or as Jean had said, how do you define success? I define success by customer conversion to new products. How can we expand on that to make it a solid KPI? All right. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. So given that kind of um, goal of the customer, which is the new products, um, what you'll have to do if you're in the session, or you could also do this with validating stakeholder requirements, so it could be in a follow-up meeting, is you want to get clarification on what products is Orion referring to. Um, because within sales organizations, he may oversee just mortgages. Um, and then you would dig into, okay, walk me through kind of your mortgage process, 
or if he oversees mortgages, um, investments, and credit cards, which I think he does in, in this scenario, um, you want to establish goals for each one of those projects, each one of those products, I'm sorry. Um, and you would do that by essentially asking him the question, okay, what is your current sales volume for mortgages? How many mortgages, um, not mortgages, let's take that back. Products from a financial standpoint, and I know this because I have a background in finance, <laughs> is a little bit tricky. So you kind of, how do I explain this? Um, you have quantity and quality when it comes to financial products. So you want to establish in your conversation with Orion, are we trying to increase the volume in terms of new mortgages, new credit cards, new investment accounts, or are we trying to increase the quality, meaning the dollar amounts? Um, so are we trying to get more assets under management? The acronym for that is AUM. So are we trying to, you know, are we going to judge success on this project on this project? by increasing AUM, or are we simply just saying we want more accounts open? So you want to get clarification on that. Um, personally, if I was in a situation talking to someone in the financial industry, I would shoot for quantity because you can get on a very slippery slope um, in financial services trying to drive the money aspect of it because there are so many different um, kind of protections out there for customers. You don't want your you don't want your customer trying to oversell someone on a mortgage or trying to sell them an investment product that may not be the best thing for them. Um, so I always try to, you know, when I was working in basement banking, I always tried to steer people away from, hey, let's grow, you know, let's grow our sales by trying to get larger transactions because you want the transactions that are going to be best for the customer. So I'm going to say, hey, we want to close, you know, 15 more mortgages than we did last quarter. Great. That is a solid KPI because what we are tracking now is quantity. Um, you want to establish a baseline for how they do their goals. Some people do them on an annual basis. Some people do it quarterly. Um, most people don't do it monthly, but figure out how they track that and then what their running total is. So if Orion says we track ours quarterly and we close 50 mortgages last month, okay, you want to close 15 more. So our goal or our KPI is we want to close 65 mortgages in a quarter. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and so thinking again, like you've got this background in finance and so that can inform what KPIs, what, what sorts of things we would be measuring. And then if you don't have a background necessarily in the industry as a business analyst, maybe you come in and you have, you know, a client that you're working for in a, in a brand new industry, Google can definitely be your friend as well, right? Like Google Ryan, I don't friend. know. Chat yeah. GPT is your friend. <laughs> <laughs> it can be, it can be. Just ask it to uh, cite your sources and, and whatnot. Yeah, yeah, Gene says finding their baseline to measure against. Absolutely. How can you measure improvement if you don't know what you are improving upon? Uh, we've also got a question here from Felice in the Q&A. Isn't it possible that they would wo want both, including number and type of products and a certain dollar percentage? Yes. And if you ask 99 out of 100 customers, they will want both. Um, but this is where hopefully you have someone on your team who's kind of dealt with, um, you know, people within that industry and they can kind of have that conversation the way I just deal with Rachel about why we don't want to do it about a percentage of dollars. Um, but if you, if they are just kind of like die hard, like, hey, this is what we want, ultimately you give it to them. Um, it is not my recommendation, and I would say that to any customer I was working with, but it wouldn't be my recommendation. But if that's what they want to track, that's what they want to track. I mean, as a consultant or as a business analyst, you would not be liable, nor would your company be liable if Chase Bank wanted to do that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And again, that's for... Um... I hesitate to say the word ethical reasons, but more so encouraging the right metrics 
to like make sure that we're not just like pushing products on people that don't need it. Yeah. So the 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 phrase or the the buzzword for it now in the industry is called needs based selling. Um, basically, selling a customer what they need um, versus what everything they can buy. So it's just called need based selling. Need based selling. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, that's, that's really nice to know. And I would imagine that extends like beyond financial industries as well. I went to a car dealership the other day, was looking at new cars and I was expecting the salesman to be like, yeah, you should like, you know, get all of these extra things. But it was very much like, yeah, what do you need? Um, and that sort of thing. So good business analyst skill to have, even if you are uh, working as a car salesman thinking, what does my stakeholder actually need? And then working on that. All right, so we've worked through how to identify the key data points that your stakeholder needs, how to decide what the mm, what the metrics are in there. Googling is helpful. Interviewing your stakeholder can be helpful. Understanding, you know, industry standards and whatnot in order to, you know, determine the numbers part, as as Jean had mentioned, the percentage, the dollars, the products, etc. And then is the best metrics to report on. I think we covered that one, right? Best metrics or whatever your, your customer tells you. And then there's a brief presentation. So let's get into the visual design aspect a little bit. If, if I'm going to be going and presenting these metrics to a stakeholder, what's the best way to present that information? Um, to me, simple is, simple is best. Um, I would probably just do a two to three slide presentation, um, you know, just kind of saying, hey, these are our KPIs, doing a quick recap of like, hey, these were the pain points that you talked about. So in this, um, in the notes from Orion, it would be, let's see, what were his pain points? Um, the sales department just using kind of a clunky system. Um, so I would kind of briefly go over those and then I would have a slide to say, hey, these are our proposed KPIs. And then essentially I'm quiet and I let the customer talk. Um, you know, do these resonate with you? Um, if I pull numbers from somewhere else, like we talked about with the Salesforce success stories or Google, you know, I might throw that nugget out there like, hey, these are numbers that we've seen from you know, other customers in the banking and financial services space, how do these numbers align with, you know, kind of your goals? And then I would just let them talk. Um, sometimes they'll say, yep, this looks good. Um, but more often than not, and what you're hoping for, honestly, is to get some feedback and to make it more of a, a collaborative conversation. Mm, mm. Okay, so it's, it's a door opener. It's, hey, this is what I understand from you. These are the specific challenges. These are the pain points. This is what I think might be useful for you. Yeah, because it goes back to kind of Janine's question, like, you know, you you present to them what you and your team have come up with in determining what their success points would be. Um, and then essentially you're asking them, hey, if we hit these metrics, is this considered a successful project for you all? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is this is this a good use of company funds? That's what I say. A lot. Is this a is good this use of cost of uh, company funds? Oh, yeah, is this a good sense. use of is it is this a good use of customer funds? Um, depending on my comfort level with the stakeholder, I'll be like, hey, is this is the juice worth the squeeze in this situation? <laughs> is the juice? Word the squeeze. I'm writing these all down for future <laughs> reference for myself. <laughs> because, of, because what you have to remember is from a customer standpoint, so in this case, Chase Bank, they are going to be, they're sacrificing a lot of resources to do this implementation. Not only do they have to pay for the licenses, they have to pay the consulting company, but also they're taking their employees so Orion, Maximilian, and a bunch of other people, they're taking them away from their current job to come talk to you all, to do these stakeholder interviews, to come in and do UAT training and everything else that goes into making a quality implementation. So there is a lot of skin in the game for them. 
So like, hey, is, you know, with what we put in front of you, is the juice worth the squeeze? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. And does it need to be simple? Does it need to be beautiful design wise? What are what are some, you know, core principles, best practices of, of presenting this information? Um, it does not need to be beautiful. Um, it needs to be clear. Um, and by clear, I mean as simply as you can state it with as little words as possible um, because you want to take out any room for misinterpretation um, you know i started off talking about how i was working with the marketing team and they were talking about events you know if they call something events but you know it's called something different in salesforce call that out like so everybody's clear so like hey i want to increase you know, the number of events that you have with your customers, which in our scenario would be meetings scheduled, but I want to call them in Salesforce what it is so that we're clear. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you're kind of um, educating your client on Salesforce as you go along or like how, how, it, how, do, how, do, how do you align on that verbiage, I guess, is, is my question. Um. So let me... Let me think. So if we're talking about, um, let's go back to our closing more opportunities. Mm -hmm. um, Chase may call that is we want to sell more products. Okay. Um, or we want to sell more, we want to sell more mortgages. All right. We want to increase um, our mortgage output or our mortgage sales by 15 a quarter and then i would just put in there like hey we want to sell more mortgages and then i would probably put like a parentheses kind of in there um putting it in salesforce language so chase says we want to sell 15 more mortgages a month that's their language then i need to kind of put it in parentheses so that my team knows and so they understand and so we have it in writing <laughs> that, mm -hmm. hey, we're going to close uh, 15 opportunities and make sure that they understand that, like, hey, when we say opportunities, that's a sales deal for y'all. Got it. Got it. So you're thinking from the perspective of how is this going to show, how are they going to see it in Salesforce? Because eventually they're going to need to go to, you know, opportunities. That's not what, what they yeah. call it is not going to be what it's called in Salesforce. So bridging that gap. Yeah, because awesome. they you don't want them going in Salesforce looking like, hey, where's the mortgage tab? There's not one. Yep, yep, yep. We don't we 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 don't want that. Making making our uh, user journey helpful and user journey helpful and lovely. <laughs> lovely. <laughs> Welcome to the stage. <laughs> You're currently muted, but go ahead and share your screen. Everyone, can we welcome Lovely to the stage? Thank you so much for coming up first today. Hi, Brian. Hi, Rachel. Um, okay, so here we share uh, the screen. Okay. Um, you find the square row. Okay. Yeah, no, I was just seeing how to share the particular screen that I want to share, but let me just share the entire screen. Um, yeah, hopefully that works. Sometimes entire screen can be a little bit funky, but... <laughs> yeah, I hope no other notifications pop up. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, so I uh, am starting off new with the KPIs. I have done a lot of dashboard creation, but that's basically aligning to what clients have asked for. I haven't myself thought about uh, what report should I build on. Okay, so as far as my experience goes and what I was listening to Brian's, um, uh, you know, tips that I think uh, more or less the KPIs are divided in these categories. I, I, we, we can't see your screen yet. Oh, we can, oh, I cannot. No, sorry. Beautiful no, introduction. That's a great start. <laughs> I was going to say, this is great. And <laughs> I, I can almost see what you're seeing, but not quite. <laughs> is it visible now? It's not. Um, are you able to share just the window instead of the entire screen? Uh, 
I I mean to me it shows like I can. I mean I'm clicking on the share button. Okay, there seems to be an issue with the browser permissions. Oh. Are you on Chrome? Oh, it didn't work. I did that. <laughs> What, what browser are you using? Uh, I'm using Chrome. It couldn't be due to my browser is showing me an update is there. It might be. Yeah. If you want to, if you want to relaunch an update and then come back into the session, we'll bring, we'll bring you back up. Oh yeah. That can sometimes help. Okay. Awesome. And then while we wait for lovely to come back onto stage, Let's go back to um, kind of talking about these uh, these presentation aspects. So yep. consider any potential challenges or barriers. Um, so Leslie was talking about, you know, she's built out reports and dashboards. Reports and dashboards is, is only <laughs> a visualization of your KPIs. So if you understand how to build reports and dashboards, you know how to do this. It's just literally taking the reports, um, well, not the reports, taking the widgets on your dashboard and describing them in words. So like if you have mm. a, um, if you have a gauge chart on your dashboard that shows a, a CSAT score um, and you would have those broken down into like red, yellow, green, you can say, hey, you know, red is below 30%, yellow is 30 to 60, and then 60 is, you know, green. Your KPI is we want to, um, by implementing Salesforce and providing all this great service um, and also automating, you know, a, a survey link or something like that, uh, we want to increase our CSAT score by 20%. So you already, when you build out the widgets, it's essentially just bringing the KPIs to life. That's awesome. Okay, so if 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 you know what a, what the dashboard might look like, then chances are you know the KPIs. Good golden yep. nugget there. Okay, lovely. We'll we'll do take two here. Let's see. Okay, I think it worked this time. <laughs> yes, yep. we can see your presentation. Um, it is just one slide. <laughs> so uh, basically what I was saying earlier that I think the best way to uh, come up or basically think about the KPIs could be in these categories, but uh, not entirely sure if these are the only things we measure. Um, uh, so in terms of money, let's say here, okay, so how you said, uh, Brian, earlier that we, uh, in your thumb rule that you have this revenue uh, as your, uh, you know, uh, main thing to actually think about what KPIs do you want to uh, measure there. So here in terms of Chase Bank, let's say we are also taking money, we are comparing sales of the credit cards, new accounts, mortgages, basically the three products that Chase Bank offers uh, with the sales before the project implementation. We are doing some changes and we are just comparing the sales before and after. Mm -hmm. uh, second is people. So people is uh, the customers. So we are measuring their satisfaction, like the ratings uh, that is reflecting the customer satisfaction. And then we are also uh, measuring the conversions. So from their initial call with to uh, when they are becoming, when they became permanent account holder. Then there is risk in which I'm measuring my uh, success. Uh, how many customers uh, were loyal, they did not really close the account after they opened. And then, uh, you know, if more customers are onboarding, obviously my uh, bank should be able to meet those demands. So that matching and creating some report on those expectations to demand matching could be my another KPI, uh, if I'm not wrong. Then uh, time means it could be a response time or it could be since they said that there's system are in silos. So it might take time for them to uh, pull up all the details related to a customer, let's say when they have an issue or something. So the time taken to pull up every detail of a customer or to uh, the time when the customer initially calls and then to 
uh, up till the time when they get converted to a permanent customer. Uh, effort could be here the digital adoption. So uh, let's say we uh, put a lot of effort in creating a net banking app. But if customers are not using it, then there is no use. So um, effort tracking means that whatever the effort we are putting, is it being adopted by customers, the staff, and those things. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. Lovely. I love, <laughs> I love your name. I'm sorry. It just makes me really happy. And how you've broken down like the KPIs almost into categories, money, mm -hmm. people, risk, time, effort. It's almost like I can ca start categorizing based on what I would see in, in the dashboard. How much time do I need to spend? Where would I, you know, start thinking about that? So thank thank you for this um for this visualization. Brian, what 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 feedback do you have? Yeah, I would echo what um, Rachel said. Lovely, this is a great start. Um, I you did, I guess, a little bit more granular than kind of what I do. I just group them in two different categories. Um, like what drives revenue, which would be, you know, the money and the people. And I, I thought about this as you were talking. If if you don't want to get as detailed as I was about, you know, needs based selling and things like that. Think about it from the standpoint of someone opening up a savings account at the bank. Um, when a customer comes to sit down, you don't know how much money they have in there, how much money they want to open up the account with. You know, I can come in there with $50. Lovely can come in there with $200. Rachel can come in there with $100. But the only thing you know is the more customers you get, you, the more customers you get in front of, the more opportunities you have to grow that revenue. So that's a more simple way to kind of get into, you know, why you don't mm -hmm. want to track money. Um, because you may have somebody that comes in there and has a million dollars, but you just got to yeah. get in front of people. Um, so your money and people both kind of go into that category of, hey, this drives okay. revenue. Um, because the more sales we have, the more revenue is actually going to grow. The more people we see, revenue actually grows. Um, the risk one on the customer loyalty, I don't, I, I can't really think of a way that Salesforce might kind of help that. Um, there's probably some some Einstein feature out there <laughs> that can help with it, but I'm not familiar with it. Um, so that is a good thing to kind of call out and maybe do some research on um, with your team to see like, hey, is there a feature out there that's like a, um, a attrition? um kind of predictor um in terms of time um i thought about this as you were talking so one thing that you would do kind of as you got further in the project stage is you could have um the team at chase kind of show you their process like show me what you have to do to you know send a referral now to do all of these different things and then that's how you get the baseline for your time um, so that would be how long does it take you to complete your test today? And then with our new solution, this is kind of going back to what I was talking about, um, where the Chase employees have to come in and help you with UAT. They come back in and use Salesforce and you want them to be able to complete their jobs quicker in Salesforce than they did before they had Salesforce. Does that make sense? Yep, yep, totally. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, the and then tracks. time and effort kind of goes in the same bucket. Um, you know, you want to okay. you want to make the process for the Chase employees more efficient because essentially the the quicker they can get through the tasks they have to do from a company standpoint, the more customers they can help. Okay, right. So time and effort can be compiled together. Money and people uh, come under revenue. And then yep. risk might not be always applicable in Salesforce dashboards. But yeah, in some cases, we can just predict the risk using Einstein or something. Yeah. To it, that, that in yeah, the risk would kind of be more of a case by case basis. Or there might even be some app exchange tool out there um, that helps with that. Because I do know that's something that, you know, uh, financial institutions kind of look for because yes you want new customers but you don't want to lose the ones that you have i just don't know of a way to to do it kind of out of the box with salesforce 
And question about kind of kind of what you meant by risk. When I think of risk, I'm thinking like data security, that sort of thing. Obviously, that's important, but not necessarily a KPI. And and then you'd put customer loyalty measurement. So I don't know. Could, could we track, you know, number like amount of time that this person has been a customer since the first opportunity one? Could we track upsells or reups or things like that? Yeah, so um, you can definitely track that. So I know in financial services cloud, um, and that's the Salesforce version for built for banking and financial services. Um, there's a thing where you basically track financial relationships. So you can see um, Lovely is a customer of Chase Bank. She's been with the bank since 2010. She has checking, savings, mortgages, and you see all these different banking relationships. Um, so that is another way you could look at kind of customer loyalty because there's some KPI in financial services, and I don't remember it off the top of my head, um, that says if a customer has, I think it's like three or four financial products with a bank, the likelihood of them leaving is almost kind of swim to none. Because if you have to go, if you have to close three products at a bank, you're probably not going to want to do it. And is that because it's too much work, too much, too long of a conversation with a banker or? It's just a, a tedious process. Because imagine, you know, if you have retirement accounts, you have your mortgage there, you know, you have your checking and savings, like you have to go to the bank, physically close all of that, you know, get probably paper checks or some type of a cashier check, take it to the new branch or take it to the new company. Let them do all of that paperwork over again. Update all your direct deposits, all your bill pays. <laughs> like it's just a lot. <laughs> yeah. Cut it, cutting into that time KPI because that that would that would definitely take a lot of time. Yeah. Amazing. Well, thank you so much, Lovely, for sharing that presentation with us. Everyone, can we get some emojis? Did you have any further questions? Um, I do not have any particular questions. No further questions. All right. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you so much for that presentation. Um, and, and, you know, the next part that I was going to ask before, and, and now we've got some good materials to go off of, is, uh, you know, considering potential challenges or barriers that may arise when building a report or dashboard, right? So, Brian, you'd mentioned risk maybe we can't track that how might we visualize that so if i don't know anything about reports or dashboards but i'm just coming in as a business analyst and thinking hey what what does this um, company need to track any suggestions on how i could start thinking about those potential challenges or barriers how, how do i go about that part um thinking about the barriers your number one barrier is always going to be data quality um, typically that is the most time consuming aspect, um, and the biggest kind of pain point when people implement Salesforce is that, or even when they're trying to do an upgrade on Salesforce is that the data is bad, um, because there, you have a lot of times where people are tracking them in different systems, people are using abbreviations. Um, so if I'm coming in as a new business analyst and I'm not sure kind of what needs to be tracked, that's kind of what I'm going to start with first is I'm going to say, hey, what are you tracking today? Like, you know, Orion, you said you want to open up um, or you wanted to increase the amount of products. So how are you tracking that information today? And I, I want them to show me. Um, so whether that's in, you know, a Monday.com uh, dashboard somewhere if it's in an old salesforce system even if it's on a spreadsheet i just need to see how you're tracking it and that'll give you an idea um, especially if you're talking to someone in kind of sales leadership that'll give you an idea of kind of what are the things that are important to them and then you can build upon that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay totally makes sense and you know danella had talked about fields not mapped blanks duplicates so we can go in and we can ask the stakeholder are there pieces of information that you think are super important to have so that we make sure that there's no blanks or there's no duplicates um 
and also I guess depends on their current system that whatever yeah. they're using. Okay. Yeah. And yeah. that's another thing, like if somebody has an old system, um, so I think in in the Chase example, they had like a legacy system or something like that. You know, what are the data points that you would like to track that you're not able to in your current system? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's, so that's a good, good That's another good kind of nugget to pull out from people like, yeah, I know you're putting stuff in here, but what is it not able to do? I can type fast, but not fast enough. <laughs> Felice says, notes mention security as a long-term goal, but do you feel it is initially important to find out who can see what different teams, managers, running users, so kind of that back-end org-wide um, security sharing settings? Um, not initially. Um, and it's... it's this kind of goes back to like Rachel's previous question about how they're, I guess, how they're tracking data today. Um, <laughs> because security in Salesforce can kind of get, I guess, a little wonky sometimes, and it can prevent the collaboration that Salesforce is meant to provide. Um, you know, we talk a lot about like the 360 view of a customer, but if you have every object in your, um, you know, every object in your schema set to private, you know, people can't really collaborate. They really can't see anything. It makes stuff a lot more complicated than it needs to be. So yes, you want to protect customer, da customer data and information, and you don't want to just, you know, some things will need to be hidden, um, but you want to understand how the, how the business works together. And from a standpoint, you know, I know in the Maximilian interview for Chase, we talked a lot about collaboration. What does that collaboration look like? Because you can't lock everything down and then say you want your teams to collaborate. Yes. <laughs> oh, very good point. Okay. So, and, and so sometimes, you know, we start with the end in mind. What is this going to look like in Salesforce? But in this case, we think about, you know, who needs to see what? Can we just figure out what needs to be tracked? And then, We'll tailor the system to adapt to that. Yep. And I'm I'm sure there are templates out there. Um, and if I can find one, I'll drop it in the chat. But there's this um, there's this concept of theory of uh, a lease visibility. I'm butchering the title, but essentially is you start with the person who's the lowest within the organization who's going to be in Salesforce. So in this concept, it's probably going to be a teller. It's going to probably be the lowest person that's within Salesforce. What does that person need to do? And then you build upon, you build on your security model from there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, that just reminds me of like one of the first trailhead modules that they have in yep. the admin certification <laughs> where, they, where they talk about that. <laughs> oh, CCPA and GDPR requirements. Yeah, I suppose that could play into it as well. Although... Uh, we kind of all have to operate under the GDPR at this point in time, right? It's a global. It's yeah. A global and a lot thing. of that stuff is already built into Salesforce mm -hmm. kind of standard um, because you have to think like Salesforce is a, a multi-tenant environment. So, you know, they protect everyone to a certain degree. And then there are additional security features that can be purchased for, um, you know, other fields like one, um, that I know a lot of companies use is called Shield. Um, I think it's just Salesforce Shield. Um, and it helps kind of protect data a little bit more than what the standard information is. That's awesome. Yeah, security in Salesforce is, is a really big deal. So thanks, Danella and Felice for, for bringing up that point. Uh, let's let's go ahead and do a quick summary. This is the end of session, so I like to do three golden nuggets. What are some three golden nuggets today, Brian, that, that you think are most valuable for our learners today? Um, I would say my three valuable moment, three valuable nuggets would be connect, I guess in your mind, connect KPIs to reports and dashboard. They're really kind of two sides of the same coin. 
um, you know, as you're thinking about kind of what your dashboard is. And this, I guess that's a really great example because I always say, you know, a good KPI is something that you can track. It's something where the data is in Salesforce and you can verify that it's happening. So if you can't put it into a report or a dashboard, even if you have to create custom fields or custom objects, if you can't track it in Salesforce, it's probably not a good KPI. Um, another one would be um, leverage existing information. Like don't feel bad or don't feel as if you need to know everything. Because especially working as a consultant, you will be, you know, kind of thrown into a lot of different projects where you may not have a background in that industry. Um, or this may be kind of your first job out of college or whatever the case is, and you may not have any type of working experience. Um, Salesforce has a lot of great resources out there about customer success stories. Um, you can also Google things, um, so different like industry magazines and, and stuff like that to find benchmarks, um, to find benchmarks for your KPIs. Because in a lot of situations, customers won't know what their goal should be. They'll be like, hey, you know, we're, we're at 30%, but is that a good number or not? So kind of going in armed with that information uh, makes you a really valuable asset to the customer. Um, and I would say my last one would be um, just kind of make it conversational. Um, you know, Lovely came up and presented and it was like, hey, this is what I have. But then we can have a conversation about it. Like she put up there like customer loyalty. That may be something that Chase wants to track. And then that gives me an opportunity to go back and do some additional research. Hey, is there an Einstein feature that can maybe predict attrition? You know, do I need to look at a managed package on the app exchange that does something like that? Um, yeah, so I would just say kind of make it conversational um, and really just kind of ask them the question. And I would say my last nugget would be leveraging Janine's question, like, you know, what does success look like for you? Because that's a good kind of opener about, you know, what's important to them. And then once they tell you what those are, then you can do your follow up questions and try to get to a number. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. What does success mean to you? Is the juice worth the squeeze? Uh, what was the other one? Is that is this a good use of customer funds? Lots of really great probing questions. Um, all right, everyone. <laughs> In summary, connect the KPIs to reports and dashboards, leverage existing information, make it conversational. And if you all want to see what a dashboard is going to look like based on the scenario of Chase Bank, make sure you sign up for Friday's shadow session. Brian's actually going to be building out a dashboard so we can uh, we can look look through that and, and actually see it built out in real time. So thank you, everybody, for participating today, for attending and to coach Brian. It looks like he lost connection. But thank you, Brian. And thank you all for being here today. And we'll see you next time. Bye, everyone.